In this video, we'll be building this simple metronome animation. It'll teach you how to animate different text runs that all have their own modifiers. The first thing that we need to do with our brand new file is create some text. And we can do that either with the text tool up in the toolbar, or we can use the T shortcut and that will activate our text tool. And we can click anywhere on our artboard to create some text. The next thing that we need to do is write our text out. In this case, I'm going to use the word metronome. Now that we've got the text written out, before I make any changes to the style, I'm going to change the origin. So instead of it being at 00, zero we're going to change it to 5050. And that way the origin is in the center of our text block and we can use the alignment tools to center that text on our artboard. Now I can go into the text style and increase the font size. And because it's a variable font, I can also increase the text weight. Now that we have the text styled, let's go ahead and break our text into separate runs. And what we're going to do is the first four letters are going to be their own run. The middle letter is going to be its own run and the last four letters are going to be its own run. So to do that, we need to select our text box by double clicking on it. And then I'm going to select the first four letters and hit run from selection in the inspector. Now, if we open up the text object, you'll see that we have one run here and then another one that has the last five letters in it. Now you really have a choice. You can either select the O or the last four letters to create your next text run. So I'm just going to double click on my text object here, select those last four letters and hit run from selection. Now you'll see that we have three runs. The first one, which is the first four letters, the middle one, which is the O and the third one, which is the last four letters. The reason that we're breaking this into multiple text runs is we are going to create multiple text modifiers and apply each one of those modifiers to their own separate run. So the way that we're going to create this animation is by using two position modifiers that are going to be applied to the first run and the third run, and then a scale modifier for this middle second run. So let's go ahead and create those. We'll need three different modifiers. So I just hit the plus button three times and you can see I have three different modifiers. Now we're not going to touch the range at all, but we are going to apply them to different runs. So uh, modifier group one, we're going to apply to run one. Modifier group two, we're going to apply to run two and modifier group three, we're gonna to apply to run three. Now we need to add the properties that we wanna adjust. So on modifier group one, let's add position. On modifier group two, which is this center run, let's add a scale modifier. And on the final modifier group, let's go ahead and add another position modifier. Now you can see I can adjust these properties for each part of the text to make them look how I want them to. One of the last things that we we'll want to do is go ahead and rename these groups. So instead of modifier group one, we're going to call this run one position. And instead of modifier group two, we're going to call this run to scale. And instead of modifier group three, we're going to call this run three position. The last thing that we're going to do before we start animating is nest our text object into a group. You can do that with Command G, or you can place a group and manually add it in the hierarchy. Now, the reason that we're adding this is because we want a root group that we can use later on in case we need to change the overall scale, position, or rotation of our composition, even after we've added animation keys. Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and hop over to animate mode and start animating. So we can either click the animate mode toggle or hit the tab key, and that will activate animate mode. All right, now that we have the new timeline selected, let's go ahead and make some adjustments to our timeline before we add some keys. So because we're making a looping animation, I'm gonna extend my timeline out by an additional two seconds, making it three seconds long. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enable my work area and center it on one second and two seconds. So that'll be the start and end point of that work area. Now we can enable that uh, in the playback options menu. You'll see the work area option there. We'll line up the first stopper with one second and the last stopper with two second mark. Now, the reason that we do this is sometimes I want it to extend keys before and after the work area just to make a better loop in case I want to offset those keys. And we'll do this just in case. The last thing to do, instead of having a one shot animation, let's go ahead and change our animation to loop. And you'll see that when we hit the space bar that uh, our playhead will start playing and endlessly loop. All right, let's start adding some keys. So the first thing that we're going to do is animate the um, run one position. That's going to be the first thing that we animate. So what we'll want to do is set a starting position for our first run. 
And in this case, we're gonna start it out here to the side. So I'm just gonna move it to negative 80 and you'll see if I type it in here to the position that, get, that uh, adds a key to our timeline. 15 frames later, I want this first run to return to the center. So we're just gonna go back into that property, type zero, hit enter. You'll see it added another key down here on the timeline and moved that run back to the center of the text box. Now this motion right here is going to uh, set off a chain reaction and move the last text run out to the side. So let's go ahead and edit at text run next. So we'll define a starting position just by keying the X position, clicking on that diamond. And then 15 frames later, it will be at its final location, which we've already said is 80. So we'll move it over. And then we need to return it back to the center. So we'll do that another 15 frames and we'll go back to zero. And now you can see that the first run hits the O in the middle, sends the last run out, the last run returns. So now we need to send the text run back out to complete our loop. So let's go ahead and open up our text object and um, we need to uh, take this key right here, copy it and paste it so that it will keep our uh, first run in its original position until the third run gets back and hits it. And then we can bring it back out to that original starting position. Now, if we play our animation, you can see that we've got a nice little loop going on here, but the problem is our easing. So we need to add some. Now, if we think about this, like the bouncing ball animation, we're going to use the exact same types of easing that we used before. So you can imagine that this text is actually going up into the air like a bouncing ball, but uh, instead of going in the Y direction, it's just going in the X direction. So if you remember when gravity takes over, we get this strong acceleration curve and then it stops once we get to the final location. And then when we bounce off the ground, we have a interpolation curve that looks like this. It's very springy. It explodes off the ground. And then once again, we have that acceleration curve to return to the center. And then we can have this same curve like this on the end. So now if we play that back, it's actually looking pretty good. The next thing that we want to do is animate the scale of our O. Now we're going to want the O to animate whenever the run smashes into it. So this is where we're going to start animating our second modifier group here, the run to scale. So we're going to go ahead and key the original scale. And then we want it to squash. So we'll go forward about uh, five frames. Squash it down. So we'll go to like 70% on the X. And to keep the volume the same, we need to go to 130 on the Y. So now it stretches and now we want it to squash down. So we'll go five frames forward, squash it down. And we'll just take these values and we'll say 120 and then we'll go to 80 on the Y because we also want it to start returning to zero. So we'll go to 180 on the, or 120 on the X, 80 on the Y, and we'll go five frames forward and just go ahead and bring it back to 100% on both axes. And because we don't want to leave the easing on linear, we'll just go ahead and throw some cubic interpolation on that, and it should look pretty decent. All right, so that looks fine. The only thing that we need to do now is take these keys that we've just set, copy those with Command C, and paste it when the uh, third text run comes back and slams into it from the other side. So we can go ahead and do that here. And now it'll play again when that every time one of those runs comes in from the outside and hits it. Now the last thing to do just to clean up the animation a little bit is um, scoot both run one and run three in a little bit more when they actually slam into the O. Because right now you can see that they're not actually touching anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, run one position and instead of going to zero, we're going to squash it in a little bit more so that it touches the O and then five frames later, we're going to bring it back to zero, just like that. Add a little cubic interpolation on it. And then we'll do the same thing with the third text run. So we'll find out where it comes into contact right here. So let's open that up 
Instead of zero, let's squash it in a little bit more. Count five frames forward, like that, and then bring it back to zero. Add that cubic interpolation, and then we'll preview the animation. Now I know I said all we had left to do was clean up the animation a little bit, but we also wanna add a little Y movement into the first and third text run. Um, now we could have done this at the beginning, but we can do this at the end now that we have our X positions all figured out. So let's just go back to uh, the run one uh, position modifier and go ahead and key the highest point. So we'll go like minus 30 and then we'll return it to zero here. And you'll notice that that gives us a nice little arcing path, boom, right into it. And then we'll do the same thing at the end. We'll start it at zero and go back to, uh, I think it's 30, minus 30, do that. And then that side is looping nicely. And we can probably even just put a little bit of cubic easing on that, which will make it look nice. All right. Let's do that to the run three as well. So we'll just select this here, go down and add the keys in. So we'll start it at zero, go to minus 30 on the Y, and then bring it back down to zero, just like that. And then we'll throw some cubic interpolation on it and we'll see how it looks. So there you go, we've got our metronome animation. Now, just to quickly review the process, we created our text, broke it into different text runs, created some modifiers, applied those to the correct text runs, created a root group, then came into animate mode, fixed up our timeline a little bit, animated the first run that's X position, then the third run's X position, and then we animated the scale of our middle text run, and finally added in the Y position to our animation.